What's going on YouTube? It's your boy Braxion. In today's video, I want to go over playing support in Rainbow Six Siege. I want to go over what operators you should be playing on attack, and then what operators you should be playing when you're on defense. I want to be going over all the details to playing support on attack, and then all the details of playing on defense. Uh, just to give you a little bit of a sneak peek, uh, that includes droning, rotations, listening to how pushes are being made, uh, watching your teammates through walls. That way you can kind of, you know, order them around. Uh, this is also going to be a little tutorial on IG yelling. Okay. If you guys enjoyed the video, let's get this video to a thousand likes. And if we get this video to a thousand likes, I will do a full video and dedicate uh, a full, you know, edit to show when you guys on how to IGL in Rainbow Six Siege. Uh, that's another skill that you're going to want to learn, especially if you're looking to rank up when solo queuing. Uh, if you can IGL when solo queuing, that'd be insane because that means that people are listening to your game sense and that's very important. So let's begin with how to play support in Rainbow Six Siege. Alright, so we want to start with the operator selection. So going on attack, there's a few operators that you're going to want to play when you're on support. Alright, so we're going to go through the basics. You should be playing Thatcher, Thermite. Uh, you should be looking to play IQ. I know you're probably surprised, but yes, IQ. You should be looking to play Capital, Habana, right? You should be looking to play Lion and Dokebi. And you should be looking to play Nomad and Gridlock. Now, that probably surprises you there's so many options. Oh, also Maverick. Now, you're probably surprised there's that many options as a support player, but let me explain to you why, okay? So, when you play Rainbow, if you're solo queued, never pick your operator first, ever. When you're solo queued, let everyone pick an operator before you. That way, you need to know what job to fill. Now, if you're watching this video and you're like, wow, I really need to watch this, this is probably because currently you feel like you're not, you're probably not the strongest gun skill player, so you're down just to play support for better people around you, or you just enjoy the game speed of a support player, and that's good. But there's a lot of pressure as a support player. There's a lot that you need to do. So I never pick an op first, and I like to see what the people around me are down to play, right? Because... If you think about it, when you're solo queued and someone auto locks Ash, that means they're an Ash man and they're probably good at playing Ash, right? You would hope. But if you see someone auto lock Thermite, you can go, oh, great, there's another guy like me. How can I play with that guy, right? Maybe I'll be his stature. But then if you see someone take Thatcher and Thermite, you don't want to just go hop to Twitch because if you were waiting, that means you're a support player. So then you should go, all right, what should I help my team pick? So then this is when maps come into play. So let me explain that real quick. So what I do is I pick my op last, and then I think about the map. So if a map has a lot of jump outs and people take Thermite Thatcher, I take Nomad. If I feel like there's a lot of flanks, um, I also take Nomad. Uh, if I'm running into a little of an issue with Nomad, or I think I'm going to be playing close to my air jabs, I'd rather just play Gridlock because I'll be able to hear them shoot it out. Uh, if you're playing Coastline, um, you'll see a lot of support players in Pro League play Dokebi and Lion. And what they do is they sit on the rooftop and they watch rotations. I made a video on my channel specifically about cutoffs and rotations. Uh, but these people also play the Kebby and Lion. And then whenever those people are pushing the site, they just make a call when they're watching flank. Uh, and then lastly, I'll play like an IQ on a map that has a lot of camera play. So if I feel like the other team has a really good Valkyrie or Echo wasn't banned, I'll play IQ if I feel like I don't have to play the air jabs. Uh, or uh, if I feel like I don't have to slow people down. Now, heading over to defense, when you're playing support, um, your main job is intel and plant denial, okay? A lot of smoke play. Uh, now, mute and mozzie will get into the areas of intel, right? You are denying the intel, which is really good. A lot of people right now currently in Pro League, you're going to see a lot of excuse me, Mute and Mozzie play. And that's because people are learning that if you can stop droning, you're going to force a lot of attackers to, to face peek or face check. And percentage on face checks are really low. A face check is when you peek rooms with no information. And if you can have a, maybe a duo queued, if you and your friend could play Mute Mozzie 
and get as many drones as possible, you guys will win a lot of rounds because you're denying intel, right? Um, if you're not going to be denying the intel, then you should be gaining it. So you should be playing Valkyrie, uh, Echo, Mozzie falls into the intel because you're hacking drones, Maestro, uh, Pulse. Uh, Pulse will fall under the plant denial section. You can even use uh, Echo, again, Intel, but also plant denial. Uh, Valkyrie, it's Intel, but also plant denial if you use Nitros below the site. So I'm guessing you guys get, you know, a good idea of how everything works. So defense, again, is Intel, plant denial. Uh, it's really important to always deny plants or try to and get as much information as possible. There are some loopholes of defense where playing a lesion is just like doing intel. If you get down seven traps, that's seven cues or sound cues, and you can call out every time someone hits a trap, and you can call where people are going. Uh, what I like to do with lesion is with my first two goos or my first three, I put them all in the plant spot in sight. That way we know if people are planting late round. Or if someone goes to plant in a common spot with the second left, they have a goo in their foot, in their foot, and they can't. All right. Now let's head over to uh, pretty much like a custom game, and I'll show you the small things on attack and defense you should be thinking about. All right, guys. So we're here on the map of Oregon, and let me quickly just say that you guys are probably surprised I picked Oregon as the map to show you a lot of things in today's video. I picked Oregon because it's small, it'll be easy to move around in for recording, uh, and it's the oldest map, in the, one of the older maps in the rotation, so it should be pretty easy to understand on how the natural gameplay on this map works. I want to pick a map that's easy to relate to, and I feel like Oregon is a very uh, common playstyle map. Everyone kind of does the same thing, so it should be pretty easy, uh, and I know it's probably going to get someone annoyed that I'm playing Ash for a support video, but... She's just fast and has a lot of breaching charges. All right. So for this part of the video, we want to go over attack support, correct? So I want you to pretend that the site is upstairs. All right, we all know there's a bomb site usually in there to plant and one in here to plant. So that should be good enough for uh, the thought process of everything. We're going to go over literally every spot a support player uh, should be thinking about. So one area you want to play right here is outside so when you play support we all know that the most important part to open up uh for an upstairs site here in oregon is the closet right the thermite wants to get in the closet he wants to open the wall so then they can plant right here yes there's usually a rotate but the plant should generally happen right here right that's the whole point of having a breacher so Instead of going over the basic, let me show you what you should be doing if you're not on that Thermite roll but still playing support. This would be the job of a Thatcher. A lot of people who play Thatcher want to get up by the door and they want to play with the Thermite. But you're jamming up with your Thermite, right? Also, your gun skill people like your Ash and your Fraggers should be pushing the bedroom because people are going to play the hallway. So your job as a Thatcher is literally only to get the wall and kind of just chill outside. So what I like to do is throw my EMPs from the floor and play right here in main lobby. So what you're going to want to do is set up a drone and you're going to get on flank watch. You're going to put a drone right here in the hallway. Uh, some people will put, you know, drone like here in meeting, right? Um, I don't really think it really matters, uh, but if you're looking for a safe place to put a drone, I would, you know, just put it here, right? And what you do here is... Um, you can, you just sit on the cam and you watch and if someone wants to come flank from kitchen Throw a nitro up through the floor If they're gonna come from the basement and they come up the stairs the flank master bedroom and nitro the floor Maybe or come through meeting since you're prepared now and you have a drone You just get off and you react and you shoot people that are underneath flanking And this is a really important spot to play right because when everyone's pushing the site um, there's always going to be somebody in rank that are, that's trying to flank you guys. And as a support player, it's your job to worry about those people, right? It's your job to protect the other people on your team. And if you're doing that, uh, you're also going to get tons of free kills because people are going to call you like this annoying loser that's quote unquote still outside doing nothing. But we are doing something. We're worried about everyone else. We're taking the team uh, into our hands to protect. And we're covering uh, all the flanks for the support players. 
But now let's talk about you playing Thermite. Right, so if you're playing the Breacher and you're worried about the wall, uh, you have to do a lot of directing, right? You have to say, yo, I need an EMP on the wall. Can somebody clear my hallway? Uh, is anybody in armory? So when you do play that Breacher role, you're doing a lot more droning than anybody else. It's pretty much your job to let people know what you can and can't do. I don't want to get too deep into thermiting, but just know that when you play thermite again, you have to drone and tell everybody what you see and what you need. You need a Thatcher, you need people to clear the hallway, you need to tell people that someone's in armory, and then you have to be like, does anybody have my nitro cell below? Because I don't feel like getting nitro on the wall. Boom. If you can do all of those things and direct a little bit, do some slight IGLing, you'll be able to do your job thermiting. Now, whew, that's a lot, right? A lot, a lot, a lot. Now, another thing that we all want to talk about, besides playing the Thatcher, right, and playing the Thermite, uh, there's one more kind of thing you need to do when you're playing support, um, and that's not dying first, right? Like, you have to really avoid and take care of your life. Your, your life is precious um, because, number one, you probably have a job to do, whether it's planting, opening a wall, watching a flank. Um, so something else that you could do if you're not going to play Thermite Thatcher is play a global op or an op with a great gadget, right? These are people that have, these are ops that have gadgets that affect everybody on the entire map, even the people on your team, or force other people on the other team to move, right? A Cappy Tau can force or limit people from moving, so if I were to flame off the door right let's say there was a rotate hole here right let's open this up let's say there's a rotate hole here and you someone needs a plant well you just do your job as a support player maybe on capital and you just hit flame flame and nobody can push the guy planting anymore and you have an easy plant and then if somebody's outside nobody can nitro the guy underneath because the guy outside has right the site onto people pushing underneath um if you're gonna play line and okebi you're also gonna be somebody who is outside like on the van watching flank you could tell the thatch to go push up or if you want and you're playing line and okebi you can do what i call is a hold a cutoff hold which is pretty much you get a lot of information for your team while droning right the thermite's pushing the thatcher's watching underneath your other two entries over there, so you have one, two, three, four people over there. Maybe you consider yourself a support player, you want to play slow. You come out here with Lion or Dorkebi, and as you hear gunfights, you just call for them. You hit, you know, you Lion call for them, you Dorkebi call for them, and you kind of just sit outside and you watch rotations. You don't make a lot of noise, you just hang out, you mind your business, and with all that gunfight happening over there, it's only ranked habitat right for people to want to peek or ranked uh like ranked talent for people want to peek and just join in gunfights so if you're out here quiet people probably won't check you and you can get people that are rotating off and get a couple free kills on people rotating uh this is all pretty much basic things when it comes to playing competitively uh but well support competitively uh, you always have to keep everyone in mind. Uh, watch everyone around you. How can you play off of them? Don't really worry about yourself. The people that have insane gun skill can always worry about themselves. Um, I'm not saying that support players usually don't have insane gun skill. That's a lie. There is some, a couple support players that have crazy gun skill. Um, but it is your job to put them in front of yourselves. Your kills aren't as important as theirs. Um, it's your job to hook, to hook them up, right? And worry about just, you know, getting tons of information. Now let's go to defense. All right, so we're on the map of Oregon still. I kind of want to play the same area still. Uh, that way you can kind of think about what I just told you on attack and then see how I'm going to counteract it as a defensive player now. So I'm on smoke. You guys know, if you know who I am, I play tons of smoke. Um, I pride myself on my smoke play. Uh, whether it's just getting kills with the SMG 11 or the shotgun plant denial information that I'm able to get without drones and let me show you everything that I think about so What I'll do in a natural prep phase is when I solo queues especially right because it's always important to give solo queue tips I understand not everyone has the ability to have a five stack uh, The first thing I want you to watch is everyone around you never reinforce first when you solo queue 
right? Especially don't reinforce first because some people won't. Is this against the rules of YouTube? Pause. So if you guys are a solo queue, you never want to reinforce first because you don't know what people are going to do. So you want to make sure you have reinforcements in case something very, very important is left open. Okay, it's very important that you understand that. So if I hold my reinforcements and then the Jaeger just runs downstairs and doesn't reinforce anything, I'm like, oh, okay, I see that the main wall is soft. I'll get that. Even though, like, armory might be left soft, I'll be like, all right, I have to get, I have to get main wall. Or maybe, you know, the Jaeger reinforced main wall. He ran downstairs after. And you look around, you're like, hmm, I mean, this is left soft. But that angle is kind of annoying to deal with, so I'll do one there, and then I'll do one there. You want to make sure you always have the ability to, to put a band-aid on other people's mistakes, right? It's your job to think about the team, so uh, let's now just do our normal setup. So if I was playing Smoke, I would just, you know, make me, I'd make my rotates first, reinforce after, and then what I want to do is set up my, um, like, my emergency plays right or like the holes like in case this happens like i don't know how to really explain it this is kind of how i think so what i'll do right is since i know i'm playing in sight i make holes right and all objectives on any map or i try to find holes that help me get kills with people that aren't in the site so if i go there i'll go here right i'll do this there boom Right, what we're gonna do is we're gonna do this right here, there, boom. We're gonna do this here. Of course, this game doesn't work out of nowhere. And then we'll do uh, that. And then we'll do one there. And you're probably thinking, there's no way you just use this many shotgun shells. Yes, because you don't need that many shotgun shells. Um, with the shotgun, I come to the assumption, and I play a lot of smoke, that I know that I only need about six or seven bullets to play a full round, because I shouldn't miss any shots on anybody. I should hit my first shot, and I should kill somebody with one bullet. So the max bullets I'll need is about seven, six to seven, maybe eight max. Uh, so I'll try to get as much out of my shotgun as possible, because I also have an SMG 11. So these holes, right, if somebody plants default, I have a site that watched the hallway, a, a hole like this is important because I know that I'm playing in sight. So if I can help any roamers, um, that's very important. All I will do is just watch the outlines of my teammates. If I see a Jaeger in kitchen, I go, oh, he's in the kitchen. I can help him by watching his kitchen door. And I'll be like, yo, I got your kitchen door for you. And you just watch it, right? That hole is important there. You have this hole here because this is a natural plant spot. A lot of people like to plant here. Uh, especially late round in, like in a 1v1 situation. A lot of people like to plant by the windows, but also jump in the windows. So I set up some holes for my teammates. Um, a hole like this would be important to watch the bottom of white stairs push up. Uh, over here, uh, we have, again, another plant area, but someone can also watch the door from underneath. I'm not going to play all of these, right? But I'm leaving holes... That way, if my teammates below that are roaming want to play them, they can. It's available. I don't even have to tell them they're there because it doesn't take a genius, right? Like, let's say I'm, I'm Jaeger roaming, right? I'm in the bathroom. They're not pushing me. People are dying on sight. And he, he hears me go, yo, someone's a big window. And he runs in, and he just sees a bunch of holes. He'd be like, oh, shit, look. Uh, all right, yeah, the guy playing in the corner. Boom, I got my easy kill. You did that because... If that's your kill, but, I mean, he's using your holes, right? So you kind of just have to understand that it's important to set up your teammates for success. And that goes back to just being a natural support player. Uh, also, when you play support, you want to make sure that whatever op you play, if you have a shield available or barb, make sure you're using it because it's important to help yourself out. Having a shield here will help me in the hallway. It'll, it'll also help me throw smokes, right, for plants having your shield there so if i want to play this right with a pixel right this is strong because as an attacker when you play you're like oh somebody peeking that i don't know so you can play a different angle you know what i mean um also what's really important about playing support is then giving your information now i don't have cameras um but 
to talk about cameras, you should always have cams that see plants. What you'll see sometimes is that when people play Valkyrie, they'll put a cam like in a spot that can see both sides or mostly both sides. So like a camera up there would see the plant there or most of the plants here and most of the plants in this room, right? Um, maybe you'll have a cam outside out of an area that a lot of people push. So like a camera outside the master bedroom could be pretty strong because then you could see somebody holding flank outside the car like how we do. So you throw a camera like out on the tree. You can see that. You can see people up here droning. You can see when the thermite's going in for a plant, right? Um, I like to put cameras on one side that I know I can't hold. So you saw that I didn't put any holes here. It's because I don't think I'm going to lose it. I rarely lose this area in ranked. I play close with a shotgun, pump people off the windows. I can smoke the windows if it's getting too crazy. But it's really rare that I'll lose an area like this. So I'll, I'll ask for cameras like in that site there, maybe a camera in here and master, maybe a camera over in this area because I have information I can see here. I shouldn't die here. So my information should be over there. All right. Um, watch your teammates through walls. Try to play off of them. Uh, another issue that you have when you play ranked, and this is the final thing I'll talk about when playing support on defense, is people don't understand rotations. Okay. We've all had teammates where it seems like everyone is roaming you're the only person in sight then you have to go okay let's say you're here and you don't know where everyone else is on your team then you want to make sure that uh you take up an important spot right so if i'm over here let's say in the beds or you know this area here in dorms going back and forth and i know that most of my roamers are on that side of the map underneath I have to come to the assumption there's no way they're going to rush up armory stairs because there's people like in uh, the armory side or in the basement area or like in classroom. So then I'll keep an eye on white stairs rush because no one's on it, right? It's very hard to explain something like this because there's so many possibilities and I have no one else with me to show you like positioning. But always be aware of a rush when you play support. You should never ever die in the sight in the first minute ever so it's your job to always keep an eye on a rush and when you keep an eye on rushes you'll win more rounds because we all know there's an ash player that loves to rush and you guys know when ranked i play tons of ash and i rush all the time and i get three or four k's because people are still setting up it's your job to keep an eye on rushing that's why someone who plays support with like lesions important all you gotta do is just put lesions on a staircase uh, or on staircases and you can call out a rush in the first two seconds and you pretty much throw the whole momentum off of the other team uh, if you guys enjoyed the video on support make sure that like and subscribe button for this channel if you learned something from this video let's make a deal send this YouTube channel to a friend have them subscribe the more I guess feedback we get on videos with this channel uh, especially by me the more videos you'll get um, I love making videos for DG. I'm, I'm down to make a video for them at any time. And I love making videos for you guys. So the more feedback we get, the more hookups we can get on video with videos for this channel. Anything that you want to see me make for them, let me know in the comment section. Uh, anything that you want to see out of this YouTube channel in the future, let us know. Whether it's IRL videos or rainbow videos, it don't matter. Uh, we're trying to expand our video horizon, okay? Talk to you guys next time.